Hey everybody, it's Angie and welcome to Hot and Flashy and welcome back to another episode of Foundation Friday Over 50s. Can you believe it's been since May since I've put out a Foundation Friday? I apologize that it's been so long since I've done one. So for my first Friday video back, I've gotten a lot of requests lately for the foundation that we're going to review today and that is the MAC Studio Face and Body. This is not a new foundation, this has been around for a long, long time, but the reason it's getting a lot of requests lately is that Lisa Eldridge featured it and she said that this foundation was great for people who were over 55. It was very youthful looking. It would stay in place all day. It was great for like mother of the bride. The other reason that I picked this foundation is that Makeup Forever was announcing that they are redoing their face and body foundation and re-releasing it as something called Water Blend. I just talked to my Sephora sales associate about it and she said that it wasn't coming to Sephora stores in the U.S. until sometime in August. So this will be something that's good to compare that to because it'll be another face and body foundation to look at. All right, so let's get into it. This retails for $27 for 1.7 ounces and it comes in 13 different shades. According to the MAC website, this is a lightweight foundation that delivers a natural finish and sheer coverage. The ingredients in this, it's mainly water and dimethicone. It has no drying alcohol. I don't think it has any fragrance, so it's just really very basic. The container is a very utilitarian plastic bottle. It has a plastic lid. It looks like something you would find in a makeup artist's kit, and it has a little dropper at the top. This is a very watery, very runny liquid. I picked it up in the shade N3. It comes in neutrals or cools. So let's look at day one, the first time I applied it. This is baseline day where I always use it with no primer and no powder. I applied it with my fingers. It feels very slippery. It spreads very far. And then it starts to get tacky. And that tacky moment, that's when you really blend it and massage it into your skin. One coat provides sheer, undetectable coverage but it does even out skin tone and slightly fade blemishes and age spots. I went ahead and applied a second coat. It is buildable, but even so, it still needs spot concealer. So this could never be built up to anything beyond medium. You can get it almost to medium, but really if you're a full coverage foundation person, this will not be for you. So my first impression was that I really liked the way it looked once I got the two coats on there. It has a very luminous finish. It has a very youthful look, like that lit from within glow. It didn't immediately settle into lines and wrinkles, so I didn't have polka dot pores, I didn't have like craggly lines. So I also like to show you how these foundations look out in the bright sun, and boy did we have bright sun today. It was a gorgeous day out. It was 88 degrees. The dog went for a swim and played with the hose. Then I came back for the five-hour check-in and I felt like at the five-hour check-in I was absolutely gushing about it. It's the five-hour check-in. So I already looked in my big 15x mirror and guess what? I can't find anything to complain about with this today. <laughs> Yay! It's not really worn off at all. It's not sliding around. It's not flaking and making my face dry out. It's not settling into wrinkles or pores. It is undetectable up close on the skin. Like it doesn't look like I'm wearing makeup and yet my face looks better than it is. And isn't that what I'm looking for in the Holy Grail? I came in back for the 10 hour check-in. I was not quite as elated, let's say, as I was at the five hour mark. It had definitely worn off quite substantially by 10 hours. Uh, you could see all my redness and blemishes showing through, and I felt like it was accentuating the texture on my skin. It crashed and burned somewhere before the 10 hour mark, probably about seven hours, I'm gonna say. So then on day two, what I decided to do was try it with a brush and to use a primer. I used a Smashbox Photo Finish a uh, poor minimizing primer. And then I had just been in New York and I had bought myself a super fancy birthday present and it was the artist brushes. So I thought, since these things are supposed to make your makeup go on like perfect and give you pretty solid coverage, I thought, well, maybe I could get like more coverage out of this foundation if I use my new artist brush. And so I gave that a try. This brush definitely gives a nice smooth, even application. Um, with this foundation, you know, it still is a little sheer, especially up close. You can see a lot of my redness through and everything. I definitely want to try it with another foundation and see how it goes. Maybe something with a little more full coverage than this one. So this coming Tuesday, Try It Tuesday will be on the Artist Brushes. At the five hour check 
check in. Maybe it's the silicone in the primer. It made this slide all over the place. I had like a big gloober of it under my nose. Uh, it had gone all patchy and it was just worn off pretty much everywhere. So day two, not so great. So let's go into day three, which is today. I'm trying to get longer wear time out of it. And I powdered the whole thing down so that it would be less luminous. Today I tried it with Smashbox Primer Water and my Morphe G6 brush. I thought Beauty Blender sponge is not going to work. It's too sheer. It's going to absorb too much of the foundation. I got to say, I love how it went on with the G6 brush. I feel like it gave a little bit um, less of a sheer coverage, but in the end, I did end up having to use quite a lot of foundation to get more coverage. Even so, it definitely still needed concealer. Then I went ahead and I tried to powder the whole thing down. From here, I think it looks fine. It looks good on video, but up close, I really don't feel like this plays well with powder. I think that the powder is very obvious. It's very much sitting on the surface. I never saw this foundation settle into a pore or a wrinkle until I added a bunch of powder over it. I'm back. It's time for the five hour check-in. So as disappointed as I was with the foundation with all the powder over it earlier, all that has disappeared. It has sort of melted together and merged and become one and beautiful and I am loving it. I'm like a seesaw on this thing. I'm up, I'm down, I'm all over the place. I can't make up my mind. I like it. I hate it. Okay, everybody, I am back for the 10 hour check-in. And can I say that this foundation is driving me at this point, absolutely up a tree. Hating it again. Oh my God. I feel so schizophrenic about this. I feel like you're going to be watching this review going, what the, what the what? When I pass myself in a mirror, I think, yeah, that stuff looks good. I actually like it. Then I look at it in the up close mirror. I'm like, eh, no. It's like settled here in my nasal labial folds. It's definitely like gathered up in there. And up here, it's kind of smearing around. There are like clumps of it every, you know, here and there. Um, so yeah, just really not, not digging it. But let me know what you think. All right, so let's run down all the points that I like to look at for each foundation. The first one is the application. This was very, very easy to apply with the fingers. It also went on fine with a nice flat top kabuki brush. This is extremely sheer coverage. One coat gives you like you didn't really put on anything. It slightly color corrects a little bit of redness, but not so much. Building it up to uh, medium coverage can definitely be done, or you definitely still need concealer with this. It's a soft luminous satin finish that looks very very youthful lit from within glowy and it is invisible on the skin which I love so you don't see makeup on the wrinkles it does not settle into wrinkles it does not settle into pores so two big pros on the wear pretty much five to seven hours this is definitely very moisturizing comfortable to wear didn't kick up any flakes for the phone test let's do it clean phone glass Elapsed time, about 10 seconds. Ooh, not passing the phone test. Yeah. Let's put it to the flash photography test since we're gonna be wearing it at all those weddings and parties we're going to. And the final verdict. I can see this being the holy grail foundation for a very small segment of the population. That would be older women with dry skin who like very, very sheer coverage and like a luminous finish. I'm actually glad that I bought it. I'm glad that I have it. I will continue to use it, especially, you know, over the summer where I really do just want to put something on with my fingers, have my skin look a little bit better than it does, but without looking like I'm wearing makeup. But for me, there is still only one Holy Grail foundation, and that is my Chanel Perfection Lumiere Velvet. This is the only one that I found that fulfills everything that I want it to be. So that's it for the Foundation Friday for today, everybody. I hope you found the video helpful and informative. And as always, I thank you for your time. I really appreciate your taking the time to come and visit with me today and for watching. So I hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.